Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to talk about the, the importance of interfaces and why do you need them and why you shouldn't interact with third parties' codes in directly in your code base. So let's get started. So I will just reuse my old project for SecureS from last episode. And instead of our modules, let's create some directory. I don't know, let's do feature flags. And um, or feature flag. Yeah, whatever. Uh, here we can create, you know, some services. Uh, we can create uh, contracts, and we can create uh, enums, and that should be a directory. And I'm Dumbo, so let's just do a directory enums, and inside of here, let's just do like a feature flag, and that would be an enum that maps to a string. Um, so we want to do like chats new or new chats equals chats that's new. Uh, and let's create like a service. Let's do feature flag service. Okay. And inside of here, we would have something like, you know, we'd have our constructor and here we would inject some sort of third party that handles our our feature flags. And I usually use like Growthbook for that just because I like their platform. Uh, it's open source, it's nice. So they have an SDK for PHP, let me just install that. And the way it works, you just, uh, you can just do like a protected Grove book, Grove book, or well, let's do this. And we can simply do this, Grove book equals Grove book create with attributes and here you'd pass an array of your user. Uh, so we can actually use like, you know, user as the user here, do attributes and we can just do like an ID for this. I did a nice video where it was implemented. And then uh, you do have like a public function called uh, is enabled. Here you'd pass your feature flag and you would simply return this Grove book is on and pass the flag uh, value. And you'd also do with features and then pass the features here, which should be fe fetched from, uh, we can do like if features did get features and here we would do some sort of call. So that sounds really important. So I'll just paste my code from the previous project and we can remove all of that and just do this for now. Uh, so it's slightly easier. I'll just inline that. Okay. This is like a very simple way to make it work right now in your um, controller you could simply inject your feature flux service. And now, um, you know, you could do something like, um, if this service is enabled, uh, we can add like a, like a helper between the user. So we could do public, public function four, and here we could pass the user. We could simply do return new self, pass the user, and this will return self. So um, this service for request user is enabled. Let's just pass the request here. And here we could just simply pass our feature flag, uh, you know, new chat. If it's not enabled, then just, you know, return throw a new exception, whatever, not important. This will work, but what is the problem? Well, first of all, we are dealing with like third party code directly in our application, which basically means that if we want to move off from Grovebook or, you know, maybe there's some other calls to it in our application, uh, like maybe you have some sort of phone validation service or email validation, and we are relying on a third party directly, it kind of stinks because your implementation is tied to what they provide. Now, if you create some sort of abstraction on top of that, what you could do is you could swap them out. So maybe, you know, for a client that is paying you more money, you could use like a better 
email verification service and give them some more data. And for your you know less valuable customers, you could use like a cheaper service. What I'm going to do here, you know, just translates between these examples. It just we picked feature flags. Uh, so let's just do like a feature flag client interface. So what we can do is instead of creating this growth book here, we can simply do that this uh, client will be feature flag client interface. And we can pass them some attributes. So we can do with attributes and just pass like, you know, ID is equal to user ID. Uh, let's change this to feature flag client interface client. Okay. Now we can basically create whatever we want here. So uh, we have agreed that there will be some sort of with attributes method here. So let's just define it here. And this with attributes should return self. We also need that we'll need to check whether something is on or off. So with that in mind, we can simply create that. So let's do public function is on and we can pass a feature flag here. Um, flag and this will return a boolean. Maybe you could even do something else, whatever. Uh, that's the bare minimum that we need. So now, knowing that, we can simply do this client is on and pass the feature flag. Now, any sort of things that are uh, that are happening here will be abstracted away behind that feature flag client interface. And it could be implemented in any sort of way that you want. It could be a growth book, it could be an in-memory, uh, it could be a database driver, it could be whatever you want. Uh, so let's create a new directory for, for clients. And inside of here, let's create a new growth book feature flag client. And this class has to implement our feature flag client interface. Let's add the method steps. And inside of here, uh, we can add our construct that we had before. Grove book equals Grove book create. We can add this property here. Um, now we need to add this with features. And let's just add this function here. I don't know if this would universal. Oh, we already had that in the clipboard. So uh, we can actually add this get features to our interface as well. So let's do public function uh, get features that will return an array. And here we can simply do you know this growth book with features attribute um, with attributes attributes and return. Uh, this and then our is on will be able to simply do return this growth book is on black value. All right, but uh, this is never used, right? So uh, what we can do is we can go to our kernel at PHP and we can to our app service provider. I'm sorry, and we can simply register that. So um, uh, this app bind. And here we need to pass our feature flag interface, so our abstract, and we need to bind it to something solid. So let's do growth book uh, feature flag client. Let's import that. And now in our service, uh, this will just be resolved to our growth book client. But we are no longer relying on any sort of implementation underneath the hood. We just have our application code here, and anything that happens. You know, beneath that uh, is taken care of. So now, uh, just to illustrate to you how this could work, uh, we can do like a database feature flag client, and this will need to implement feature flag client interface. And obviously, you know, creating this from scratch won't be as easy. Uh, but get features could simply return feature flag cases. And 
that will return an array. Now is on, uh, you know, this could be like a query. And with attributes could simply instantiate it here. So let's do protected array attributes equals empty array. And here we could simply do this attributes equal attributes and return uh, this. Okay, so now with is on, you know, we could do some sort of query that the flag equals db table feature flags. And then having that that's a flag, you know, we could simply check if the conditions on that flag match. So we could do, you know, uh, for each this attributes or well, for each flag conditions as condition, uh, condition, you know, If one of the conditions uh, matches, you know, this attribute, so it's whatever, like we, we, you know, this is like a fake implementation. Uh, otherwise, we would return true. So now, if for whatever reason we want to switch our implementation from GrowthBook to our database and we want to create this on our own, we can just go to our app service provider, double click that bad boy, and paste this. And we you know, can import that as well. And this will work. Maybe you want to have like an in-memory feature flag client for whatever reason. But, you know, that's just like a, one example. You could do the same with like phone validation, as I mentioned before. Uh, maybe you have some better validator that would work for your more paying customers and you have some cheaper validator that would work for your, you know, less valuable customers. Well, customers that bring less, less money in, basically. So that's all I wanted to show you today. A uh, very basic you know, dependency injection trick that you can use in your application. It creates better separation of your app project, app codes, and your your third parties. It's very easy to test because, like now in your tests, you could very easily do. Oh, let's do crow for feature flag. Um, you do like a protected function, you know, with feature flag, we could pass a feature flag here and we could pass a value whether it or not it's enabled we can return self. And now we could do something like this instance, uh, feature flag client interface we can do mockery mock feature flag client interface. Uh, interface, and we can do mock should receive with attributes and return self, and then we can do mock should receive. I think called it is on. Yeah, is on with flag. This flag and return enabled. And then we simply need to return this. And you could even add some like helpers. So, you know, a uh, protected function with flag enabled. And then we could pass feature flag type. Uh, feature flag. Feature flag, right. <laughs> Self and then just do this and do you know without feature flag and then pass false here so it's very easy to test uh, now we'll never actually hit that third party and we can just assume that the feature flag is enabled or disabled um so all the flexibility here so again if you enjoyed this please leave a like below uh, thanks so much for watching and have a great day bye